All right, in this section, we're going to look at some of the tools that are necessary to do the maintenance that we'll be describing in this video. And um, uh, not only uh, how to use the tools, but how to modify the tools so that they work in the real world. Uh, the three tools that are probably the most useful uh, in the maintenance that we have to do will be the cylinder base nut hold down wrench, the um, valve adjust lock nut wrench, and the intake pipe gland nut wrench. Now, the intake pipe gland nut wrench is an elegant little piece. It, um, uh, it's well designed. Uh, there's not much I can say negative about it except that it's getting hard to find. So these, um, these little hummers are, are getting tough to come up with. The other tools uh, need improvement. Now, this is a cylinder base nut wrench. If we uh, go to the overhaul manual and look at what it has to say, it says that the cylinder hold down nuts are to be torqued to 250 to 300 inch pounds. Okay? 250 to 300 inch pounds. Now, my question is how do we do that with a loop on this end? Uh, this was obviously designed just to put a rod through there and tighten it. How do we determine 250 to 300 inch pounds? Uh, what's 250 to 300 inch pounds to my elbow? may not be 250 to 300 inch pounds to your elbow. And especially with the cylinder base nuts, this is a critical issue. Uh, the Jacobs engine has 12 cylinder base hold down nuts. And those uh, studs are so designed that each one of them is designed to carry 1 12th of the load um, while the engine's running. Now, if we have some of the nuts under torqued and some of the nuts over torqued and some of the nuts torqued correctly, what we're going to have is only a few of the nuts carrying the load that is supposed to be carried by all 12. And what will happen eventually is the studs will begin to fatigue in two on the under torqued and over torqued uh, studs and, uh, and they'll break. And if we don't notice that right away and continue to run the engine, eventually the cylinder will depart the aircraft. Uh, it's happened before and it's, it's not a pretty thing. So we really want to make sure that when we torque the cylinder bases, uh, which is something that needs to be regularly done according to the operator's manual, that we're actually torquing them to the figure that the manufacturer called for. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to modify this tool. We're going to go in the machine shop in a minute and we're going to cut the loop off of this wrench. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this half inch drive, half inch socket, we're going to slip it down over the shaft of the wrench and we're going to weld around there. Uh, don't start modifying your snap-on sockets. It's, it's not that important. This one was $1.99 at the discount tool store and we have yet to break one of these. Uh, we're just not putting that much load on these, uh, on these sockets. So just use a cheap socket. Use something that's, uh, that's worn out in the splines or, um, or one that you can buy at the, um, at the discount tool store and uh, we'll slide that over there, weld that on, and then we'll be able to torque this so that we're confident that each one of our cylinder base uh, nuts is, is holding its share of the load. The next tool that we want to look at is this valve adjust lock wrench. Now again, like the cylinder base nut wrench, the valve adjust lock nut is supposed to be torqued to 300 to 325 inch pounds. How do we know that? Do we hold it out here? Do we hold it in here? Where? How do we get 300 to 325 inch pounds? Well, the only way that I know to do that is if we can put a torque wrench on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and carefully heat this wrench. We're going to bend it and, and bring this handle up so that we can weld to that handle. And we're going to weld along the center line of the uh, wrench. We're going to weld an extension. Again, $1.99 at the discount tool store. And um, uh, we will weld that on and that way we can put a torque wrench on it and get an accurate reading. Now why is it accurate that we, why is it important that we torque these accurately? If we under torque the, um, the valve adjust lock nut, the danger is that it backs off. It loosens up in operation and, and as it backs off the valve is no longer opening the engine runs bad. It's got, a, it's got a cylinder that's dead now because the valve isn't opening. Now if we over torque it, 
uh, the danger is that we fracture the threads in the, the um, valve adjuster and the entire top of the valve adjuster can break off. When it does that, then we have exactly the same result. The adjuster backs off and, um, and we no longer have um, the correct adjustment. Um, as I said before, this little wrench is a, is a beautiful piece, um, needs no modification whatsoever. We can put a half inch extension in there, um, put a torque wrench on it, it works great. Unfortunately, they're scarce. So what we have done is we have begun to machine this little part, which is an approximation of that wrench, which we can now grind on our, uh, on our discount extension and weld that on there and that will give us our um, um, our intake pipe gland nut wrench. So let's go into the machine shop and we'll make a few of these tools and then we'll come back and look at a couple of other specialized tools. Okay as you can see I have this uh, fitted up in a in a uh, cutoff saw. Uh, it isn't necessary to do it this way it's possible to do it with a uh, uh, with a hacksaw uh, but uh, the, the material is fairly soft but uh, this just goes quicker, so we'll do it with the uh, with this saw. see that slips right on there and we'll just take it in and, uh, and weld it. Okay here we've got our intake pipe gland nut wrench. Um, you can see we have it clamped in position and um, so Pat's going to weld it up and we'll show you what that looks like. You ready? Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, and there's our final product, the Jacobs intake pipe blend nut wrench. Okay, now we've got our little uh, valve adjust lock wrench here, and uh, what we've done with it is we've blasted it off. It had cadmium plating on it, and that uh, doesn't weld well. So, uh, so we've, uh, we've blasted that off, and uh, so we just have raw steel now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the vise, and we're going to clamp it over the socket portion of it. And the vise will actually act as a heat sink, and will keep us from changing the temper of the portion of this wrench that really matters. So we're going to put it in the vise, move back about an inch, heat that area, and bend a roughly 90 degree angle there so that it gives us something that we can weld the extension to. Put that in the vise like that, clamp it down, and now we'll heat it up and bend it. Okay, we've got the, um, the valve adjust lock wrench uh, jigged up now in the vise. Again, we're going to use the vise as a heat sink so that it will um, absorb a lot of the heat as, uh, as this gets welded. So all that's left now is just to run a bead down both sides of this and, um, and this tool will be finished. Okay, here we've got our cylinder base nut wrench with the uh, socket fitted to it and we're holding it there in the vise and we're going to weld that up and that tool will be finished.
right, here we have our the final product. We have our uh, intake gland nut wrench, the valve adjust lock nut wrench, and the cylinder base fold down nut wrench. And you'll notice that with each of these, I uh, masked them off and painted the the raw portion uh, with flat black, which will just keep them from rusting over a period of time. Now, generally, it's not a good idea to uh, weld on uh, extensions and sockets. Um, they won't hold up uh, long term, but the loads that we're putting on these are so minimal that, um, that, that the way that we're modifying these, it'll, it'll last forever.